Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Jared. Today I wanted to do a video on wheel alignments. So I had a lot of recently bad experiences going to get wheel alignments with shops not wanting to touch them because of the camber arms or um, they're too busy or you need to take time off work to drop it off in the morning. So I thought I'm just gonna have a go at trying to do it myself. So I've done it a bunch of times now at home and I've found I've come up with a formula that works well enough that I can do it from home. So why would you want to do wheel alignment at home rather than paying someone? Well, A, you can save some money. It is going to take some more time than if you were to take it to someone else. Uh, B, you have the flexibility to change it whenever you want and you can align it, align it whenever you want. You can do it at night, the morning, the weekend, when the wheel alignment shops are shut. You can do it at the track, you can do it whenever. So this is not the only way to do your wheel alignment, but I found this is the easiest and most cost effective um, for anyone that wants to do it at home. You don't really need any special tools. Um, everything you can buy from Bunnings or on eBay. This camber gauge, I just made it myself for probably like 20 or $30 from parts from Bunnings. This digital camber gauge, you can buy them on eBay for $10. And the metal you can see here is probably about $20 worth from Bunnings. And a few bolts. You can buy these, but they're like three, four hundred dollars online. And I thought I could just make one myself. And I've just got this cut out at the bottom so you can actually put the string line through when you got it set up. Apart from that, I just got some 3 meter, you'll see in the video, 3 meter PVC pipe and jack stands and just builder's string line which you can get from Bunnings, no worries. And a 30 centimeter ruler as well. First you want to start by getting your car up to some wooden blocks. These are about two and a half inches high. That'll make it easier to adjust the suspension by getting underneath your car. Ensure that the wooden blocks are the same height front and back. You also want to do the alignment on a level surface with no slope or angle because that's going to affect the weight of the car. Here you can see the slip plates which I've got the wheel under to do the adjustment. You want to make sure that the wheel is in the center of the wooden block. Here you can see there's just two galvanized sheets with some grease between them to allow the wheel to move freely. First I start by taking the wheel off so I can loosen the adjustment for the camber as well as the toe on the tie rod. On my car, I adjust the camber via the upper control arm. And here I'm loosening the nut lock nut for the tie rod end. Then I go put the wheel back on. Make sure the wheel's not loose. And lower the car back down onto the slip plates so the suspension can settle. Next, we're gonna make our string line adjustments. So these are the three mil poly pipes. I'm just marking a center point in the middle of the three meter long pipe. From there, you wanna measure out about 15 centimeters from the track width and mark it on the poly pipe. Then measure in from the end how many millimeters it is and replicate it on the other end of the pipe so it's symmetrical. Then we can lay the two pipes down next to each other and transfer the markings across so they're the, exactly the same. And we can drill some six mil hole so later we can thread the string through.
I'm only drilling the marks on the ends and not the middle of the pipe as we don't need to connect the string through this. Next we can sit them on the jack stands and feed through the string line. I just like to wrap it around a few times and then tie it off. Then run the string line down to the other end of the car and feed it through the other hole which we drilled before. Ensure the string is tight and not bowing in the center of the vehicle. Should look something like this. Then you want to replicate it on the other side, exactly the same. You can adjust the height of the string by using the jack stands. If it's already maxed out, you might need to use some wooden blocks to get the string in line with the center of the wheel. Then center the pipe in the center of the car using those marks we had before. Measure the height of the string to the ground and make sure it's the same front and back. Next, measure from the center of the wheel to the string on both sides and you want to center the string so you have the same measurement on both sides of the vehicle and repeat this for the back of the vehicle as well. Now we have parallel lines to adjust from. Next I'm going to start by adjusting the camber because this is going to affect the toe of the car later on. So you just want to start by measuring the, the camber point at the beginning and adjust from there to your desired angle of camber. On my car I can adjust it by the upper control arm on the vehicle. You might have to go forwards and backwards a few times here until you get your desired measurement. Here I've selected two and a half degrees negative camber. Next we're going to measure the toe of the vehicle by measuring from the front of the rim to the string and also the back of the rim to the string. Here I've just wrote down my final measurements. So I've got one mil of toe out. Next we're going to have to get under the vehicle and start adjusting the tie rod end to adjust the toe of the vehicle. This is a forwards and backwards approach where you'll have to make fine adjustments, check your adjustment and then go back and adjust it again just to get it 100% dialed in. I like to write on the concrete what I measured just so I don't forget. Once you're happy, push up and down on the car just to settle the suspension. Go back and make sure your steering wheel is still straight and measure again to make sure nothing's moved. In this case I needed another final adjustment and I just have written on the ground my final adjustment where I've got to one mil of toe in. Next we're moving on to the back to also adjust the camber and toe. First again starting off with the camber and starting to adjust the camber arms. The reason I like to adjust the camber first is it's going to affect the toe and for me the toe or the tracking of the car is more important than being a few degrees of camber out. So next I'm moving on to the rear toe adjustment on here. I've also got some adjustable arms on here which make the job a lot easier. And again push up and down on the suspension to settle it and measure again. and just double checking the camber still where I want it. I've gone for negative one degree on the back. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that quick video. Just like with anything, the first time you do it, it's gonna be very slow and take a lot of time. And depending on how much you need to adjust, it's gonna depend on how much time it takes as well. So keep having a crack at it, but my advice would be check, recheck and triple check. It's easier to check it once you've got all the strings set up 
rather than taking it for a drive, it not being right, bringing it back and having to set it all up again. And it is quicker with another person to get it set up too. And potentially two people could be aligning the car at the same time, one doing the right, one doing the left as well, and that'd be even quicker. And like always, make sure you test drive the car after and make sure you lock up everything so it's not moving or loose at the end. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.